Kia ora everyone, today's video is on um, fitting a model uh, which is about um, putting a line of best fit onto your scatter graph and interpreting it. Um, there's several ways to analyse the fit of the model um, which we will discuss. First of all, let's look at the achievement criteria for model fitting. So for achieved, you just need to fit an appropriate model to the data. And this will be um, a linear model, um, and that's all you need to do there. For merit, you need to talk about whether the model is a good model or not. So does it fit the data? Um, your comments need to be in context. For excellence, you go a step further and you reflect on whether the model makes, ste makes sense. Um, so looking at the statistical and contextual knowledge that you have and does it make sense. Um, we interpret the R values or the residuals. That allows us, that supports what we're saying about whether it fits or not. Um, you talk about the adequacy and the strength um, of the relationship and finally you look at your model and you say well can I improve this can I look at um, other models so non-linear models or should I separate my data into groups would that allow me to make um, a better model that fits our data better okay so if we look at model fitting I want you to use NZ Grapher to apply a model um, it's a regression line. Um, have a look at the R value. This is, the R value is only for linear relationships and as we've talked about in previous videos, the higher the value, the better the fit. So we want the number to be as close to one as possible. And then finally, could it be improved? Could we use some groups um, or non-linear lines? So let's have a look at that. If we go to NZ Grapher, Let's bring up our whoops. Let's bring up our Kiwi data. We're going to make a scatter graph with uh, height predicting the weight, and let's put a title on this. Okay. So if we look at this here, we want to fit a, a line on it. So we click here for the regression line and it brings it up. Okay, now when we are discussing our lines to determine whether it's a good fit, we look at the amount of scatter. Okay, so ideally the line will go through the middle of the data. And what I can see here is that the data between 36 and 38 centimeters in height, um, it's, it's, it's heavily scattered below the line. When I look at between 38 and 42, the majority of the data is above the line. And the same here, so between 44 and 48, the majority of the data is below the line, and then from 48 and above, it's above the line. So what I can say is that this model does not seem to be a very good fit okay by just looking at it and looking at the spread of the scatter I can see that it isn't um, it's not consistent it's a weak relationship um, so we can definitely improve on this model um, I can support this by looking at my R value and my R value is 0 0.5 and we know that 0 0.5 is a weak relationship Okay, so that's just reinforcing what we already know. When we talk about the fit in terms of context, I know that we've got some grouping going on here. Okay, so um, the reason why this model is not fitting very well is because we've got so many different groups within our data. Okay, because we've got different um, species of kiwi, because we've got different genders of kiwi, um, the line is not going through the middle. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to explore some other models. And when I look here, I can see I've got quadratic, cubic, um, and exponential. If I scroll down, there's a log, um, and there's a whole heap of different ones that we can look at. Okay. When I want to find a model that's a good fit, what I want is I want to see the line going through the center of the data. So if I re remove my regression line, I'm going to click on quadratic. Now I can see that 
if I compare it to my regression original linear one, they're quite similar. The only thing that's really changed is it's curving at the top and the bottom. So I don't feel that that is an improvement. The next one I've got is cubic. And what I can see here is with the green line, the way that it's curving, it kind of is better. Um, you can see that it is going more closely through the center of the data, po data points. Another way to analyze the fit of a model is by looking at the residual plot. So if I change this to the residuals plot, now what I've got here is along the bottom is the weights. Okay, so it's looking at how good is the prediction. So we're comparing the prediction to the, um, the actual data points. And when I have it here, it's a linear regression type, okay? Now this point here, this dotted line, that's our model, okay? And we can see from when we looked at the original graph that between 2.3 and 2.5, the data is heavily on the bottom. And then at these points is mainly scattered on the top, mainly on the bottom, mainly on the top. What we want to see is an even scatter above and below the line. Okay, and the closer it is to the line, the better the fit of the model. If we click on the weighted average, this shows us the weighted average is telling us the average um, of the data. Okay, so at 2.9, we can see that the data is mainly scattered below the line, and the weighted average is well below the line. Okay, we want this weighted average line to be as close as possible to the line because that's telling us that the average for the data is fitting the model. Okay, so before when I was saying that the linear line did not look to be a very good fit, the residuals here is supporting it. Where the line is, where the weighted average line is below the dotted line, we can say that. Um, our predictions are not going to be as accurate because in reality, um, what we predict will be higher than what it is in, in reality. And between this point here at say um, 2.4 to 2.75, our predictions are going to be heavier than what they would be in reality. Okay, so if I change this linear, so we quite liked the look of the cubic model. So if I click on cubic, you can see here that the line is a lot closer, the weighted average line is a lot closer to the residuals line, sorry, to the um, regression line. So that's telling us that there is a better fit. Okay, the fit's quite good between 2.2 .2 and up to about 3, um, then it's slightly above and then it trails off below. So our predictions um, around the center here are going to be a lot more accurate. We've got a lot more confidence in our model. So that's how we use the residuals plot to support our choice of a model. Okay, so if we go back to our scatter, okay, and what we can say is that our model, okay, so the model that we think is the best fit is the cubic model um, because it, um, it goes through the center of the data better. Um, we can't use R values to support this, that's only for linear, but we can use the residuals to plot to, to prove that, okay. The other thing we can do, which is probably more useful for this data, okay, is to separate it into groups. The reason for that is we've got different species, different genders, and if we analyze them separately, I think we can get a better model, okay? So what I'm going to do is for variable three, I'm going to put in the species. And you can see that this now brings us three different graphs. We've got the great spotted kiwi, we've got the brown kiwi, and we've got the toeka, tokoeka kiwi. And what I can do for each of these is I can pop in my regression line. And instantly, 
we can see that we now have a better fit. Previously, the R value was 0 0.5. We can see here it's improved to 0 0.6 um, when we round that up. 0.53, 0.54. So it has improved the strength of the relationship. This means that our predictions are going to be more accurate. Okay, so depending on the species um, will depend um, which, which equation you use. Okay, um, one thing that is important to note, I thought, see if I color it now by gender, what I thought was perhaps if I separate them into gender, I could have um, new lines for each gender of each um, species. And to analyze that, um, I downloaded the data and I separated it using Excel. Um, it's quite a long process, which I would rather um, demonstrate in, per in person because then I can answer your questions as they arise. But what I found, do you notice how like the male data is on top of itself like this and the female data is on top of itself? What I found was um, when I separated it out, it actually gave me no relationship. It was very close to zero because the data is, um, is vertical. So this was the best relationship that I could find um, and this is the one that I would use. And so that's how we um, apply models to our data. Okay, um, what I did was I applied the line, I looked at the R value, I looked at nonlinear regression lines um, with the cubic being a better fit than the linear, and I also found um, that I could improve it by using groups. Um, I've got some information here about residuals, which is what I discussed before. And that's about what you're looking to find. What I would like you to do is to have a look at um, my exemplar that I did for my Kiwi birds. I've gone into quite a lot of detail when I've done this writing. Um, if I scroll it down and you can see that where are we doing now oh, there's the analysis and model fitting and predictions so I spoke about the um, linear um, I looked at coloring it I analyzed the residuals to confirm that the linear model was not a good fit uh, and then I looked at comparing other models um, with the quadratic model and the exponential model. Um, for some reason I haven't included the cubic model in there, so that's an oversight. Um, and if I was to edit my report, I would talk about the cubic model, which was a good fit. Um, so please excuse that oversight there. And then I've got it separated into species to see if the model would improve. And we can see that it did. Um, oh. And here is when I separated it out. And you can see what I was saying about how the lines are quite flat. Um, the R values are very small. There is not a relationship there. Um, I researched why. Um, and I thought it could be because Kiwi don't fly. Um, so maybe they don't have such a tight relationship with their height and their weight because they don't need to be aerodynamic. Um, and then I looked into making my predictions, which we'll talk about in the next video. Your task is to do the model fitting section for marathon time versus stride length. Okay, so start off with a linear model, um, analyze that, See if you can improve it by using non-linear models. Um, that's always your first point of call. And after that, you can look at um, if there's any groupings that would improve the relationship. If you've got any questions, please email me. Um, I'm always here. Thank you.